2020 life. Today we study this character G. The pinyin romanization of G. Going down, okay, G. Cantonese G. G. Okay, you just find the subtle difference in the ton intonation. And the Vietnamese in the uh, Korean G is similar. Uh, Japanese Itatsu, the Itatsu is a little bit different. Okay. Okay, that is the basic form of this character. G. Okay, that is the TTS. Ji Bu Ji Bu the radical at the left. The ninth row. Chi. We are we now we are here. Ji, this means becoming. And remember that character mean the cloud and it means the tongue mean the sword means the the cloud kind of uh, gathering in the heavy weight and uh, it's just like a, a horse galloping then it will become rain sooner or later and that means G becoming G is the verb Yun Teng Ji Yu Yun Teng Ji Yu in Cantonese Yun Teng Ji Yu I have something wrong with my settings here I can use keyboard, it's okay. Let allow see a Chrome or Firefox Quartin. Has he on one bone though you young gay such a one tongue see you one tongue see you okay one tongue see you one tongue see you okay then the change back to Mandarin. Or the Mandarin, there is a Mandarin a man in China, the Mandarin in Taiwan. It's similar, but with some subtle difference. Yun Teng Zhi Yu. And Google Translate has quite a number of characters of translation. Zhi. Zhi means two. Also means a crossing something, span something, incur, devote, expand. Both all these are correct. An adjective is delicate, fine and close. But of course, uh, the explanation in this dictionary is much correct. And with some uh, origin of the ancient uh, articles about uh, some uh, Chinese classic thousand years ago explaining this character. Been given, achieving, ascending, Attracting, returning, devoting, uh, studying, or something. But anyway, that's uh, English here. The send, the devote, the deliver, the course, the convey. And these are the basic meaning of this character. But it is somewhat uh, in a classical and in daily conversation with Southern Jew, this one. Uh, it's, it's almost very rare in Mandarin speakers, but for Cantonese speakers, sometimes we use it also. Because it's very strange for Cantonese, sometimes we use very old school Chinese. In some of, the, of some, of them, they're very um, a brute, but some of them are very classic and very um, old school. That's a writing a sequence. Okay, that conversion and may wish to watch again.
again, the left part is the radical. Okay, that's it. Oh, we have to finish all the website about the character. I'll come to this is the writing, um, the so-called seal script. And after uh, a thousand years, it changed to the standard form like this. Uh, it's hard to write Billy in the uh, in the writing pad, so it's not perfect. Okay, let's try again because it depends the pressure. In the actual ink writing, we have to control the pressure of the pen of the feather pen, then can write it more beautiful. Okay. Now that is the standard form, there's no simplification in mainland China and in Singapore, so that is the only format for all Chinese. For the cursor script, it's very easy. This is always a standard form for the left part, and the right part can just put something like this. So that is uh, almost the only uh, script form. Okay, that's it, and uh, we talked about the next character, about rain tomorrow, and that's a much more frequently used character. Again, this one is not very um, frequently used. Okay, I will try another, see what kind of more beautiful form of the pressure script. Yeah. I think that would be okay. Again, can't write too beautiful using the writing pad and computer, but use the fill up hand, you can have, uh, have it more beautifully written. Okay, that's it, and I uh, hope to talk about the next character, hopefully tomorrow. Thank you.